certainly some of the pure. Out of some groups will say, hallelujah, yes. Right? The vast majority of others who I term, and this is a numbers issue as well, who I term water to color the Republicans. Say no. That's not what the Quran says. So there are competing verses in the Quran that may be interpreted in certain ways. And this is exactly where the issue of authority lies. Who interpreted it, and how did we interpret it, and did one period of interpretation continue to resonate in period after period after period? When there was a diversion from a consistent, historically consistent view of, of, of this particular question, uh, did that view rise and then come down, or did that view now become a dominant view? So I'm here to tell you why Islam is not here to dominate. Islam is here to be present. It's a religious tradition. A lot of us in America, particularly because of how nationalist governments in Muslim majority countries leverage Islam in their own records to for a variety of their own purposes. Islam has become equated to a political movement in a lot of our ways. So we cannot think of Islam as a religious tradition. We always think of Islam in the context of what? A dominant world, right? I mean, I'm using this <coughs> specifically because this is exactly the, you know, go on the internet, Google my name, or Google cares. It was just a slew of really scary rhetoric. We are here, I'm here to dominate. I, I, I live in Melbourne. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to be a mayor of Melbourne one day when I retire. But, you know, I'm not here to dominate. We're not. We, we, we. I promise you. Uh, so, so this is this one of the challenges. So, some of Bin Laden said, you know, he wants to go really bring this back and bring that back. He wants to bring the kill off of that. And I was not as why he says that. But he's not speaking for me. He's not speaking for the Muslim. He is speaking for himself, and he may be speaking for the Puritans. And there are those who follow him. But we've got to resist this temptation that, one, that all Muslims are that way, and two, that we have organizations such as CARE that I belong to, in a stealth mode, to secretly, guess what? My agenda today is to take over this. Take over the website. <laughs> which, which is the latest thing on the blogs, right? I am here to take over the website. I'm not. I'm not. I'm here to have a dialogue and explain this. As best as I can. So this fear thing, this fear mongering, it's getting old. Yeah. He's got to stop. Thank you for that question. Um, I actually have been asked. 
taxes to to participate in something like that in a Northern Jersey school. So they're having workshops with the teachers on these very issues. So our job, my job, will be to go and try to present the evidence to show uh, why toleration and, and is really the best policy. So and then the teachers. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the person who's going to serve the crowd will be the teachers. Uh, obviously, sort of teaching Islam to students would be great in terms of, of getting them a better sense of what Islam is, but it gets a little complicated, uh, you know, with the variety of personal But um, so I think from that standpoint, I think having better informed teachers. Um, I also think having better informed parents is going to be helpful. Um, my brother was a teacher, uh, he did teach for America for two years uh, in some of the roughest schools in Atlanta. And he said, you know, the reality is uh, that we, we are teammates with parents, um, that teachers can only do so much, uh, but we really need uh, parents of these kids to be involved in the way and form. So I think as parents, the more informed you can be, uh, the better it can be. So it is something, whether we like it or not, we have to be informed about it. Just like we've had to be informed about a variety of different things uh, in American history where we're engaged in it because the new side is So I think from that standpoint, informed parents, informed teachers uh, would be good. I think sessions like this are helpful. Um, and then at the end of the day, uh, you know, I was speaking to yesterday, yeah, yeah, I for yesterday, I was speaking to um, group of uh, Indonesian students that the State Department had brought over uh, to the U.S. The State Department does this quite often in their engagement with the Muslim world. They bring over uh, Muslim students and they show them what America is about. So I was asked to talk about Islam in America. And during the conversation, you know, in the Q&A, they said, well, listen, you're painting too rosy a picture. Like, you know, you know their issues, but you know they are, and you know, what happens to and so I told them, I was like, look, you know, I, I don't mean to give you a completely rosy picture. I think, you know, there, there are definitely issues, there's discrimination, things that happen at different points, but not at the institutional level. And I said, more importantly, some things that you hear from schools, for instance, that occur, they're really sad and they need to be addressed, but we have a general problem with bullying as a whole. You know? I mean, and so I was like, some of these things are fitting within the dynamics of our public schools, of our schools in general, which we have to address as a country. Uh, and I think it's not that might be a component, but part of sort of the larger picture of what's going on in our
decentralized in America. And I was, I was wondering, is, given the fact that it's decentralized in America and it's a lot more, you know, things can be done and there's a certain freedom there, and there's a localization within America and it has hits on a particularly American caste as a religion, what is the influence? What kind of influence? What kind of and how much of an influence does American Islam have on international Islam or on other specific I can't hear it. Yes, yes. One thing that I would, I would, I would sort of re-describe, I, I, I did mention uh, that there is a localization that's going on. He did mention that Islamic scholarship historically has been decentralized, and not added that within the Shia tradition, it is a lot more hierarchical. Um, whether it is being decentralized in the United States or not, that's a separate question. You, you might derive that as an occlusion. So I just wanted to caveat that, that statement. Now, um, your core question was, will American Islam, or is American Islam, the localization process, going to then affect back the outside world? And the answer is, yes, it will. Has it so far? I think before it can go out and influence, what has to happen is local institutions have to be there. So one of the things that uh, I'm often asked, well, where do most of uh, imams or scholars who live in America, what seminar do they go to? And you know, my face turns red. You can't tell. Because we don't have seminaries. We have one that just recently opened, and it's sort of it's sort of close to a seminar. It's called the Zaytuna Institute. But we don't have seminaries. I'm holding I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> he needs to, at a certain point in time, uh, in the future, establish a new seminar. And folks like him are getting and there are, and that's the that is the that is the interesting, that is the hopeful piece. There are many folks like Adnan, who has been born and brought up here, I assume he was born and brought up here, I think he was, uh, who are going into very uh, serious religious studies, who will be the ones creating these seminars. So when uh, a mosque imports an imam, and there are still immigrant mosques in the country who import an imam from Egypt and Pakistan, who 20 years ago couldn't even speak English. How would they connect to the youth? They couldn't. They couldn't connect to the, the congregants. You have that, that has dramatically changed. Where you have imams who do speak English, who do understand the localized needs, and who, and then this is the future part, are going to create institutions that will create local needs. So once that happens, local religious leaders, local institutions that, that graduate these, these types of individuals. Once that happens, then the influence that American Muslim or American Islam for, you know, it sort of sounds a bit weird, certainly for Muslims it's American Islam, what is American Islam? Well, for, from a scholarly scholar perspective, it is the organization of Islam in America. Will that be influence back Muslims? I think naturally, if America continues, and I say that very, very carefully, if America continues its leadership position in the world, then yes, as part of that, that will happen naturally. I do have a serious question about America's leadership position. That's not a subject to discuss right now. But I, I, I do have concerns about America's leadership position in the world. It has nothing to do with this. It has to do with such a choice that America is making. 